Holy cow. I got to be honest. I didn't think you'd come back. Let's look at what we got here. Now, I've spent, oh, probably two hours working on this thing, I'm going to say, and probably an hour and a half of that was just me scratching my head going, holy crap, what I get into? But you know what? Once you start cutting, it all kind of makes sense. And take a look at what we got right now. I have to build this much of a boat and throw a skin on it and I'm done. Don't let a wreck intimidate you, man. Cut the thing apart and fix it. If you got a decent boat in the first place and this boat is gonna win some races. And I'll show you how we do it. Stick around. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be a lot of fun. This is gonna be day quill enhanced because I've been feeling like crud. <laughs> the boat's broken. Of course I feel like crud. Nah, anyway, I don't think I got the vid. I just got the crud. All right, so today we're just going to move kind of fast, all right? We're going to cut out the damaged material in here, build some new pieces. We're going to trim off the last of what's left here. We're going to cut this uh, fiberglass here down a ways because we are going to lay our new material all the way up in here, and I want to be able to fiberglass to it again. I'm going to remove this. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't want it to blow up the rest of the boat. I can, When I get down on it just right in the uh, reflection, I can see the line of where I originally installed it. So I'm going to try to score it there. And by golly, we're just going to grab that and rip that out of there. What's the worst that can happen, right? And then we'll finish cleaning up under here. We're going to cut this guy back a little ways. We're going to kind of square things up where we're going to butt things up. And uh, I have a little, just a little bit of a tricky deal I got to do back here. I don't know, can you tell? I don't think it's focusing on the right place. Stupid camera. Anyway, I, I got to trim off just that sixteenth of an inch amount for the uh, non-trip. And, uh, and part of the lower there and the non-trip is really the side piece. Same thing here. And then kind of cut these corners off squared. I have, uh, this is two pieces of uh, eighth inch light ply. And, and I normally just cut the one out so that when I'm laying in the uh, these stringers, they fit in the uh, forward most one. And then the rearward, the transom part, is all just one solid piece. You know what I mean? Where these aren't sticking out the back. It's just a real clean, clean look, and a, it makes it really quick and easy to finish your transom because you're not trying to, you know, sand off and fill any gaps at the end there. But we're just going to go ahead and hack it all the way, and uh, we'll overlay this and then sand it off and clean it up as much as we can. Anyway, we're just going to do a lot of cleanup, then we're going to build some parts, then we're going to build a boat. All right, I'm going to get to it. Here we go. If I just pulled that up, I'd get this here. It would lift up this first layer of the uh, ply here. Don't want that. All right, we'll fill it. That's why they call it a fillet, right? <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know, fill it. See, that's what we wanted. All that right there is loose. Yeah. Son. Fill it. Looks alright, huh? We're not going to get fancy here. I'm just going to lay a new piece across right here. And then we'll just rebuild this outer section. All right, we gotta hack this. Hate to do this. Gotta try to take 1 16th off of it. 
You can't see it, can you? Uh... Boy, that's a great way to get cut. See the end grain there? There we go. Kind of see right here how that eighth inch just goes in yay far. It's gonna go all the way now. Doggone it. We gotta get that piece eighth, that sixteenth off the bottom there though, don't we? Let's see what we can do here. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Probably not gonna be you. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. I think my diamonds are gone. That's unfortunate. I don't think it's real diamonds, but they call this a diamond wheel just so they can charge you a lot of money for it. We'll wear our way down through it. See it? There we go. We're there. Somebody made a comment the other day on my last video that this is like detective work. You got to reverse engineer what was there before. And uh, to be honest, I. I don't hardly remember what I did, so it's kind of fun. This is not fun. Um, it's kind of interesting. I've put it off long enough. I believe this is eighth by eighth here. Eighth by three sixteenths up here. That's our goal. Okay, that'll lay real nice right there. A little bit of sanding and bing bada boom, it'll work. Eighth by three sixteen. A lot of times you get these kits and they're cut out for like quarter inch, right? Holy cow. Overkill. Not blaming anybody. Do it your way. Um, but quarter inch would, <laughs> would have broke out in this hit just like anything else. It's just it would weigh a lot more, that's all. Okay, it wouldn't weigh a lot more, but uh, think about a piece of uh, quarter inch, right? Quarter by quarter. What if you cut that in half? That'd be quarter by one eighth. Okay, you've just cut the weight in half. I'm a big fan of quarter by three sixteenths. Lighter yet. It matters to me. It should matter to you. A little bit deeper. Real close. Like that, right? Look at that. We're almost done. 
<laughs> oh, I don't even think I need to go deeper. I think I, nah, yeah, just do That's gonna be good. All right, look at that. Just that quick, that part's ready. I'm gonna square this. Why complicate things? Okay, another thing we're gonna do, and this is something I've changed in later designs. I mean, it's not like it's a big deal, but too large of a gap here, right? Too, too much a squishy. Makes the paint crack. So we're gonna add, oh, what do we do? We're gonna add, we'll tuck it in right there and just drape this guy across here. In fact, let's mark that. Better figure out where we're gonna go here first. How about... Right here. Yeah. This piece is patterned out, of course. You can see I did some modifications to it when I was building the boat. I mean, I always change things, but I've got it patterned out in its finished design. And I'll just lay a new piece over it. I'll even add this cutout to it. Well, I really don't like how that's cutting. Okay, there you go. A little stronger. Less likely that when your buddy goes out to pick the dead boat up off the pond that he punches his thumb through the deck. That'll help. Oh, hey, we were gonna remove this, weren't we? That's gonna be fun. You probably can't tell. I can see where it was originally attached. Uh, right there. I don't know that it's gonna do anything, but I, I'm gonna score it lightly and hope that it separates. Can you see that right there? I can see the line. And see the paint just kind of let go there because this piece flexes, of course, and this piece does not. That's actually real easy to see, but just for spite, we'll tape it. Mm. There-ish. That's all I want to do. I just want to score it to encourage it to let go. Ready? There you go. Oh yeah. I did double it, but I didn't double it far enough. That's probably why it was flexing. See, the things you learn. It's unfortunate, a little bit of this forward piece came off. Whew. Man, I did a lousy job with that right there. I tell you what, what I just told you. Let's take this clean out, right? When we put our new piece, we'll come all the way up. I don't know, like I said, I'm on heavy meds, so I'm probably making bad decisions, but that'll make it more interesting. You wanna see another cool tool? Well, let me get closer. That's a mover. Let's get to it. Oh. We're gonna take all of the eighth inch material away and then we're actually gonna grind into the wood just ever so slightly. Just we wanna get bare wood that we can uh, glue to.
By the way, you know what I should have done the other day, and I meant to tell you about this when we started today, is I cleaned this all uh, with alcohol, with a spray cleaner uh, to remove any oils. Because if you've got oils on the surface and you grind on it, then you've just introduced the oils into the wood and your epoxy won't stick as well. So I should have done that before I started, but I was just so eager to start cutting. You know how it is, but uh, I have done that now. That's why you see this dust doesn't stick to anything. It's not oily, it's not wet. This is really exciting. Some of my other videos are good. You just have to trust me. Go check them out. And if they suck, you let me know. And then I will refund all of your money with interest. Why don't I cut that whole piece out? I'm going to create myself a shelf here where all the material can overlay the front here a little bit. It'll be stronger, easier, but difficult to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? We're going to save the, uh, the original support and just take away everything else. Took a little chunk out there. It displeases me. Okay, kind of took my time there as you noticed because we really need this guy to hold well. So that's why we've scuffed that really well. Made an executive decision on how I'm gonna deal with this piece. There you go. New piece will tuck up underneath. You'll never know it was there. Just you and me. And 20,000 other people. Can't believe you guys are watching this crap. Okay, let's fix her up now. So by now you've gotten out your trusty jig. You do have a jig, don't you? I'll put a link. I'll show you how to make it. Okay, there'll be a link in the video description. Take a look. Let's see how we're doing with this boat here. When we reassemble this thing, we are going to reassemble it on the jig. Here we go. The jig is up. Look at that. Still nice and stout. It's amazing. Okay. Now, if you've built the jig the way I show you in my videos, you will have these uprights in the front that locate the sponsons, okay? And it's a perfect fit when you build the boat and then after you paint it, it gets a little snugger. So it might be a tight shove. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Back is on. We want to make sure this is square and stays put. Did you notice that? Yeah, that was, that was earlier in the year. Okay, the back's down tight.
We've cut away a bunch of the floor on that side, right? But we know that framework is still where we want it. So let's put a piece, got a piece over here. It's 1.5 millimeter. This is what I use on the floor. It's roughly 16th, okay? Use whatever you use. Uh, yeah. Okay. She's down. If we've been living right, the floor is still pretty flat, and it is. I like it. Let's see where we're at. This boat is uh, pretty symmetrical. The, the, symmetrical? Uh, you know, that's weird, right? No, I don't even know if that's the right word. Uh, the ride pads and stuff and the angles are a little bit different but the sponsons themselves are located in the same spot, okay? I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, six and 21, 30 seconds, a little over six and five eighths. Moment of truth here, six, and 22 30 seconds because it's got a deck skin on it that's impressive let's take a look back here who built this boat holy cow uh let's see five and 28 so like seven eighths five and seven eighths Oh, well, because there's no deck skin on there. So that is going to come right in. That, I, don't, I don't even believe that myself, to be honest with you. You got to feel good about that. All right. When we're ready to go, we'll do our framework. We'll double check at that moment and make sure everything's in position. And she'll be right back to dead nuts square. Do you know where dead nuts came from? Look it up. It's actually pretty funny. Okay. Let's cut some parts.
<laughs> oh, that's my boy. There you go. drawing plans pal <laughs> uh, I ain't no fancy draftsman we're gonna knock the little nubbin off the bottom there we're not gonna include that this is our piece that goes right here can you dig it Okay, now this guy here, I make this piece out of two pieces of one-eighth light ply laminated together. It's got to be the hardest way to do it, but I, I haven't found a good, at least I haven't found a piece of quarter-inch light ply that I really like. And so I laminate two one-eighths together because I really want to build this part twice. Trying really hard to hide it, but I don't know if you can tell, man. My voice is shot. Why am I using that one? It'll all make sense in a minute. Let's see, it's gonna go in there this way. Yeah, look at that. It's so beautiful. Okay, well let's make this one. Man, I couldn't keep that straight for nothing. Bingo. It's all guesswork here. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I extended that way up. What do you think? I think it's real close. Almost. That's pretty nice. I keep saying it, but I'm going to say it again. We're almost done. Okay. Which way you want to go? Let's go this way. You ever break one of these blades? I haven't run one through my finger yet, but with any luck, we'll do that here before the video is out. And we'll, we'll get to hear some girly screams and stuff. It's just that easy.
There's your boat. <laughs> Ready to go. Hey, let's talk about parts prep just a little bit. I'm gonna let you behind the curtain here just a bit. Uh, it's a little bit embarrassing for me, but you might as well know. Um, when I'm done cutting a part out like this, I am not done. Uh, can you see? I don't know how well you can see on this video. Everywhere I've cut it, of course, I've cleaned it up a little bit, but it's all sharp edges. And I just don't like sharp edges. I think they look tacky. Um, one of the things that really bothers me about, you know how I am about sealing up my boats. I like, I want, you know, this is a wooden boat and you think this thing's gonna last two years, but I want it to last a long time. A sharp edge gets nicked easily and then water intrudes and it starts to look like crap and you look like a bad boat builder. Don't do it. We're gonna clean all this up. And um, I've done it a little bit. You may or may not be able to tell, but I break off, break off. Uh, that's what they call it, I think, when you're sanding. I break off every sharp edge that there is. And you're gonna do that with a little bit of sandpaper. We got some 150 here. I don't care for this stuff that much. Seems like it wears down fast. But uh, I don't know if you know this trick about sandpaper. I don't know why I felt like I needed to cut that. It was too long. It's hard to roll it, right? You try to roll it up and it cracks and folds like that. Do you see that? So the first thing to do is to pull it across a sharp edge. See that? It automatically starts to roll. And we're going to pull it across all the way to the end. And we're going to do it again on the other side. To make sure we get all the way to the end. Now it wants to roll. Okay? So that's a handy dandy way to make nice rolls out of your sandpaper because I just know that that's the thing you've wanted to accomplish all of your life. There we go, we got our rolled up sandpaper and we're just gonna work our way around. Look at that, see there's some rough edge right there. I'm telling you, water's gonna get in and it looks tacky. This is on the back side of the part. <laughs> but it matters to me, okay? This is why when you guys message me and say, hey, will you build me a boat? The answer is no. It takes me too long. I mean, come on, who does this? What kind of fool? But it's not that big a deal, right? I mean, you spend a little time and you probably can't tell in that video, all those little frayed edges are gone. It's kind of got a cute little radius to it now. Just do it, all right? You, you're gonna feel better about yourself, if nothing else. It probably, I mean, this is a complete waste of time, right? But boy, just, you just feel like a good boat builder when you get done. Hey, you wanna see it put together? And then of course we gotta run our little stringers here and build our non-trip, but. Other than that, the boat's fixed, man. Shoot, I'll be ready by the weekend. By the way, it's my own little weird way of doing things, but I do things in terms of 30 seconds. So, let me just show you. I don't know if you can see it. Right off the end. You can see where the cut down is right there. It's at 28. So 9 and 28, 30 seconds. And I would just call that 9.28. Okay. Up in the front part here, where it tapers down. Oops. I'm going to have to read it this way. You probably can't see it. 924. I realized that that is nine, what, and three quarter, nine and seven eighths, or vice versa. Don't care. To me, it's 928, 924.
I need it to be, wow, almost eight, seven, 731, right? 731. And where my cut down section is going to start. Will be at 62. Let's make sure we got it square. Yeah, 62. I tell you already this finished ply. It's beautiful. And oh, by the way, that's double N. F I double N I S H. Finish ply and finish ply has a nice finish. Woohoo! Okay, here we go. That was stupid. Okay, there's your new floor. Is it pretty? Is it, is it pretty? Make an effort. There's my boy. Sit. Good job. Okay. Suspense is killing me. Okay. Got the uh, width here really good. It's too long. Not sure quite how or why. How are we going to make that go away? Too hard to saw it. Okay. Come to Papa. That causes me great pleasure. Now, I know you guys are already thinking this in your head, or you might even be yelling it at the screen. This is an issue here. Do you know what's going to happen when I glue this thing all together and I try to run it? Right. It's going to crack right here. Whoever said that, get another piece of pumpkin pie. Of course it's going to crack here. You, I mean, you can't just butt this together and throw this thing out on the water and expect it not to break. It's going to break. Um, the super cool way to do this, and the way that I do, one of these days I'll show it to you when I do skins. Say you've got a, you know, your piece of material on a gas boat, this will happen to you. And it lands, it lands short, right? And you got to you got to splice a little bit together. You certainly don't want to do it up here where there's too many uh, angle changes happening, too many compound kind of surfaces going on. So you'd make your splice back here near the back. And if you just dead nut splice it like this, it is, first of all, it's going to show and it's likely going to crack. And so you think, well, what I'll do is I'll, you know, butt them together and then I'll lay a, a backer on it, right? You, you know, and yes but it's not best. The, the cool way, takes more time, is when you're, when you're making your seam, you make your first piece, let's find a chunk here. You know, I've made my first piece and then I need to splice onto it. You would cut this guy in a wavy pattern in some, in some way. Actually, I'm super anal about it and so I, I use a, like a socket and I draw around it and I, I make a real specific wave to it and that's the way you make your cut okay 
And then when you're splicing your new piece, you lay your new piece down and lay this over it and then you trace your line onto it. You know, you've already cut this, let's say. And now you have it drawn on your second piece to make that cut. And you butt it together like that. And that way it doesn't have a sharp strike line to break, right? To crack or to give that, that appearance that you'd see on your deck where you just see that break. So this is a super slick way to do it. Takes, takes you know, a little, little bit longer, but uh, you'll really never see it later. And I still, even like on, on the gas boats and stuff, I still lay a piece back behind it just for that added little bit of strength, but you could just practically butt that together uh, and leave it and it would work. And now we come back to this. I did not feel like waving this and then trying to build a piece that would fit up under and be long enough and then wave it and then do it again. So I'm going to do one of the things that I hate most in all the world. And that is all I'm going to do is put a, put a, uh, a doubler on the back of it. All right, so I think we're about ready to hit it. Wouldn't you say, Jackson? These are all of the parts. Got all my sticks cut, marked. There's so many of them, you know. And uh, B3, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> but, uh, the, the whole thing, I'm going to try to just kind of put it all together all at once. So I, I wanted things to move along as quickly as possible. And this is, a, I think, a, a really stupid idea. But I thought, well, what the heck. I'll let you guys see all this stupid stuff. Got a few brushes ready to go already. I cut off probably the last quarter inch of the brushes. They're just too flexible. And I find if you cut them back, they're a little firmer. And you can kind of work with them a little better. Hate these. Hate them. Hate them. You know why. I mean, they leave the stupid hairs behind like crazy. Found these on Amazon. This one's already wet because I was laminating that. These two eighth inch pieces here together. <clears throat> but these, uh, I'll get you a link if you want. Uh, shoot me a message. I'll, I'll get you a link to them. Uh, they, they leave no hairs behind. Just like the Marines motto, man. No no hair left behind. And I, so I really like that. They're not very... Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of hair you know you don't pick up a whole lot of epoxy with these but for the finer work these small ones uh, work just great way better than those uh, three eighths ones or quarter inch whatever they are those them hairy buggers uh, got our uh, G flex ready to go there oh I've dry fit everything several times mainly just to make everything fit but also just for the exercise of running through the process from one end to the other uh been sanding i decided not to i, I was gonna put in maybe i already told you i, I was gonna uh, overlay the floor here where the floor gets repaired i was gonna overlay it all the way back to here to try to make it less obvious what i'd done but uh, i'm not gonna do that i i thought well it's just extra for no good reason whatsoever but anyway you can see i've been sanding the crap out of this here and i have the center section here to sand yet let me show you that piece maybe i already showed it to you i don't know you know i've, I've been sick dude so I, I wasn't thinking clear there for a while um I, I think i shot some video too i don't know if it uh, in my dayquil rampage who knows anyway th that's how the overlay is going to look here it's just to it's just to strengthen this seam this terrible idea a straight seam but is what it is and plus i thought with this one rather than just overlapping it a little ways since this is going to be in the middle where you're going to see it plus why not um i thought the reinforcement all the way on the stuffing tube here would be a nice idea so we're doing that uh the forward floor section is ready to go i showed you the cut out of the floor but it gets doubled i cut another 16th you know, 1.5 millimeter piece that we'll lay in and it fits perfecto mundo in, and is captured in here. It's, uh, I want to say five and five eighths by five and five eighths. It's a nice square piece. I had the original floor that got blasted out, as you'll recall. And so, 
I just took and uh, let me make sure I get the right way. I just took and laid it on there and it told me where the holes needed to go. So theoretically the motor will be just exactly back where it was. Take a look at that. Yeah, see? It's junk. Yeah, even Jackson says it's junk. He knows. So, yeah, so we've got that ready. Uh, what else? Like I say, I've got a little bit more sanding to do, so we'll do that really quick. And then we'll be ready to put it together. And I'm going to try to film it all for you, and I'll do a whole lot of fast-forwarding, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so we got our, our 80 grit here. Got to scuff the heck out of this in here. Boy, epoxy does not like to stick to smooth surfaces, and this is very smooth, if I do say so myself. You probably can't see it. I drew a real light pencil line around uh, the piece that will be laying in here. My new piece overlaps this just a little bit. You know, I didn't want to just end them right here because then I've still got a weak point where these join together, so it overlaps. Everything gets offset, overlap where I can. Complete waste of time to glue something in that isn't gonna hold. get as much of the dust out of there as I can out of the, all the dandy little grooves we just made. I want epoxy filling those grooves, not dust. But a big issue after I lay in the new ground floor, let's say, and then the doubler that's going to sit in this forward area where the engine mount is, I've got to weight that really well because what I'm essentially doing is laminating this upper piece to the bottom piece. And that's all fine and dandy right now because I built a new floor section. You can see the jig has it cut out for the dropped engine well. And if I set this on there and I weighted it, I would be sinking the floor down in here. No bueno. So, took a piece of quarter, cut the same shape as the original floor. Left some room for the strut and the stuffing tube, and that's my new go-to surface. Slide it up, fits right in place. So the new floor will lay right here, and then the doubler will go on there eventually after a good portion of the framework's in. And then I can weight it really well uh, to get good adhesion between the upper and the lower. Okay? All right. All right, my weird, crazy anal technique for epoxy. I hit everything with the raw epoxy, okay? Everywhere it's going to touch together. By raw, I mean unthickened, right? And then we're going to come back and we're going to thicken it and lay a thickened bead along this same area. I can see some raw material down here. By raw there, I mean the raw wood. I gotta make sure I hit everywhere that I might have nicked right now because I won't get another chance. At least in an enclosed area like this. It's not fully enclosed, it's open on the end, but it's not accessible once it's assembled. Oh, I was talking to you about the, the raw epoxy, unthickened. I lay it on everywhere first because I want it to absorb into the grain or into whatever porosity I, I might have. And then I thicken it and lay a thickened bead on top. If you want to sound really professional, that's called wetting out the surface where you wet it out with the unadjusted epoxy so that the epoxy can dig in deep. What you want. Think of it as a sponge, okay? Let's talk, all right, so you got a sponge. And the sponge is bone dry, okay? So we're starting with a bone dry, crinkled up, wrinkly old sponge. And if you pour some water on it, it soaks right in, right? Sponge 
loosens up the uh, water soaks way down into the sponge you know I mean we're talking spongy now it's a spongy sponge okay so take the same dry sponge and put some jello on it what's it gonna do jello is just gonna stand there on the surface that's what happens if you put I'm not gonna hit this part here we're gonna do that before we flip it that's what happens if you put uh, thickened epoxy onto the wood it just stands there you're not gonna get a good adhesion down into the wood so you're gonna wet it out first yeah I know it's an extra step you don't want to do it you're in a hurry you think you're in a hurry I gotta to try to put all this together before any of it sets now that I said that I'm gonna go shut that heater off That's ready to lay in as soon as we lay a little bit of thickened epoxy along these seams, okay? Collodial silica. If you don't know, if you haven't seen my other videos, shoot me a, a message and I'll give you the link. Okay, a big concern for me is this edge right here. So we're going to just pull some of this thickened stuff all the way along into that edge. And then when we slap the bottom on, you know, it's going to ooze out everywhere, but better that than there be a void. Avoid voids. I know, that wasn't a good one, but hey, it's free. <laughs> be a lot of fast forwarding going on here. You know, if you ever want to hear what I'm talking about during those fast forward times when it sounds like gida, 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 you know, Mickey Mouse, um, just slow the video down. And then you'll get to hear all my terrible jokes. And we're going to drop our floor into place. If I missed something, you'd tell me, right? Oh, I did. And you didn't even tell me. Actually, I should have marked where this is going to go on the bottom. So I could have wet it out the bottom. Fairly important piece, but... All that surrounding area will get filled with epoxy, so it should be stout. You see that epoxy coming out? Makes me happy. I don't see any coming out right here. That makes me unhappy. We're going to go ahead and just push a little bit down in there. And I can actually see it start to come up now, so this is probably unnecessary. Came up all along there. Came up over here. A little bit over here. So what I don't want to do is glue the boat to the jig, right? So that's how we're going to stop that. Now this bothered me when I was thinking this through. Because I want it laying flat against the jig, right? <laughs> so I even measured it. This is a 2,000 stick. I think I can live with that. <laughs>
don't know if I showed you, I went ahead and cut out the original material that was inset into the bull nose here because I wanted the new piece to, you know, be joined mechanically, if you will. Okay, we're going to thicken it a little bit. What was next? Oh, binder clips. Kind of matters that we follow the radius really well here because this is where the deck will attach. <laughs> binder clips do a beautiful job of holding these in place. And yes, that will probably glue the binder clip on there, but it'll pop off. Smooth material, right? Okay, we're mixing a batch of West systems here to use on the floor. Again, just because it's thinner. And it tends to set harder than G-Flex does. And I want this floor set down hard. As you saw, it was like the one piece that survived the explosion. Should be pretty good, huh? We're not holding anything back here. Okay, that's crazy wet. Not worried at all about the holes. I fully expect them to fill in with epoxy, but I'll be able to tell where they were. So we'll just drill right back through those later. Okay. Still looks very wet in there. Okay, we're in. Sorry, I lost the camera there for a minute. We're back. Because I mixed up that West Systems. We're just going to finish out the job with it. Already laminated these together. So weird just putting together partials of your boat, you know. You'll see what happens under here in just a second. Maybe. Maybe you won't. It's a bad angle. There's a piece of 8x8 uh, eighth eighth that runs all the way along here. And it tucks underneath this piece. Butts up against right here. Okay. All set. We're going to set that aside. This guy needs to go in. I am doing a couple of reinforcing pieces on this one. Just because I, I really think I kind of got lazy here. I should have should have cut that clean out and built a whole new piece. But I didn't. So what are you going to do?
Wouldn't hurt to have some thickened stuff on that. I think I've wetted out everything that needs to be wet out. And that's going to fall down anyway. So I'm going to thicken this a little bit. Remember I told you it takes quite a bit to thicken west. You can already tell this is starting to get just a tiny bit gummy. It's starting to set off just a little. Good. Oh, it might have a tiny bit of run to it, but I think in, in the small quantities, I think it'll stay just fine. Find a clip. It was kind of distorting it a little bit. All right, so let's think about this. We've got to think this through. Okay, I need to uh, apply a bunch of this thickened material up in the front. Quite a fair amount of wood up here went bye-bye. And I, I could have cut this further out, but I liked, I, I liked the degree of overlap that I had going on here. So we're just going to fill it and let it ooze. Gonna put a bunch oh in the areas where it butts up because it's it's less than a flawless fit. So I want to make sure that that's filled. And again, when it comes pushing out all over the place, what do I care, right? Yeah, I'm getting a little carried away here, maybe, but um, remember that this area right here. And here really matter because I'm transferring all the pressures of the turn fin here and here. So she got a hold. Okay, I think I'm set. Let's put a little on the end here. On each side here. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of wood missing there. I don't know. Can you see that? I think we talked about that before. Gotta try to fill that. Let me get a smaller brush. Oh, and right here. You can tell by the color change. I don't know if you can see it. Hope you can. Okay, we're in. And because I don't think I added any thickened epoxy there, I'm going to push at it until I can see it push through the front so that I know that gap is full. There we go. Now before we're done, before we're done, this part will get sanded really thoroughly and it'll have just a little piece of fiberglass laid on each side. I know it's not great. That's the way it's going to be. Need to wake this whole setup now. But we're not done installing parts. Gonna have my, e my fingers epoxied to everything. I might just edit all of this out. This is the one you remember I told you it tucked up underneath here. Okay, there we go. Epoxy ooze. If it doesn't need to be there, take it out. Let's wait.
Ranger Clips. So this piece would normally have ended right here, but because things are broken and I wanted to splice that, and I wanted to do a doubler on where this piece butted in right here, I don't know if you remember I told you that was going to make sense over time, it should now. Okay, we're almost there folks. Only now I gotta run around, find something to use to weight this thing down with, so that I can be comfortable that uh, it's gonna be straight. And I'd like a bunch of weight here, here, and here. I think I know how I'm gonna do it. All right, let's find out what we got going on underneath this mess here. Usually I'd clean up all of this garbage here now. You might not be able to see it out of the camera shot there, but uh, it's a disaster. And uh, I don't care because you're here. And as long as you're here and we're together, we're going to get into this thing right now and see if we glued this down to the jig or not. Um, I, uh, I keep all my containers, all my old mixed containers of epoxy on hand just to make sure that it all set the way that it should. By the way, did you see that? This is West Systems. It tends to snap real easily. G10, not so much. It's a little bit softer material. Not G10, G Flex. Maybe, just maybe, that's why they call it G Flex. I'll have to look that up. All right, here we go. Let's see what's happening underneath here. This is a remnant from my old uh, uh, 2.5 stock hydroplane racing days. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, a couple batteries from my electric mower. I'm so green. What else do we got here? Just tons of clamps. They're traditional sockets for weights, of course. Mainly because I can't find all my weights. They're still buried somewhere. A few more sockets. Oops. I'm going to step on that and I'm going to fall. Bust my hind in. Okay, let's get these big clamps out of the way. Let me get these guys up here where they ought to be. Suspense is killing me. Binder clip heaven here. See, they'll get glued on here and there, but they'll pop free real easy. And just as I say that, one of these is going to be like permanently welded to the hole. <laughs> uh, maybe it's that one. Nope. So far, so good. All right, I don't know if you if I showed it to you during the video, but I poured pretty much raw epoxy in here. There may be some of it that ran down underneath. We may have a lot of cleanup to do. It's real heavy right here. 
Um, and I, I don't think I explained why this is cut out here. This is because this is right where the it, obviously where the uh, uh, shaft comes out, the flex shaft. And there's not much room underneath it. And there needs to be room under there for the starter belts, right? In fact, this is going to get ground down a bit here, and we still got to put our uh, cutout for our our engine well right here. Um, but so that's why I, I can't fill this in. I literally need that room underneath the, the belt. But it's fine, I think. Okay, there we go. What? Oh, clamps in the back. How badly stuck do you think this is going to be? I'm going to be nervous about it, see, because it's tied up here anyway on the jig. and So I'm not going to know if I'm pulling the bottom off of it or if I'm just pulling against the fact that it's snug here. Unless, of course, it moves real easy. Speaking of move easy, let's check this sponson. Okay, it doesn't move anymore. All right, a little lift. A little more. Coming up real easy. Don't you want to know why? Because it's glued to that quarter inch floor, not to the jig. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I sure hope this comes free. Should we encourage it? Hmm. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Come on now. Not my first rodeo. Went and saw one once. A little disappointed here. Oh no, I was thinking epoxy didn't push through. It looked like it was a gap there, but it's not. Can't get my finger in it anyway, my fingernail. That would be a gap if I get my whole finger in there. Oh, look at that, it left the residue behind. I hate that when the tape does that. Oh, I hate that it's leaving that residue. I mean, that is just causing me physical pain. Okay, there we go. Okay, quick bonus detour here. I'm almost done doing this, and I thought, gosh, maybe you don't know this. Um, one of the best times to work epoxy, um, by work it, I mean, as it's hardening, okay, and you, and you want to do your final sanding and shaping and so on, is hit it while it's still, oh, let's say green. Like if you get it within 24 hours, you're probably still good. And I've already done a bunch of the work here, but... If, if I have lumps and chunky monkeys laying along here and I started sanding it, I'm going to be sanding fore and aft of that lump, right? So this is one of my favorite tricks, similar to that little half-inch blade that I use. And if you just lay this guy on there, all it's going to get is that epoxy that's sticking up. I mean, you're actually kind of dragging the surface of the paint a little bit, but it will focus on that epoxy that's sticking up. And I've already worked my way across here, and I'm kind of done. I mean, I'll sand this, of course, because I'll probably reshoot the whole bottom, but uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, I worked a bunch of it up here already. There's a little bit of left over here, and if I'd used that little half-inch blade, it's hard to judge its exact position relative to the floor, but a bigger blade like this will at least get you that first, this part done. We're still going to do some sanding where this is rounded here, but um, one of the things I like about this is it doesn't move much very fast, and so it keeps me from doing anything totally stupid. Can you see how it's just rolling up this extra bit of epoxy here? And you can kind of hear when it's almost done. I'm focusing a little bit of pressure right here on this edge. I can tell there's a little bit more here. A little tricky right here where it's right close to the side. And I'm just rolling epoxy off without sanding over into the floor. I think we're home free. Can't 
feel it at all. Anyway, wish somebody had shown me that a long time ago. I always just thought these were for slicing your fingers open. No, they have more uses. They're great at rolling epoxy off. Lovely. All right, let's keep going. Okay, don't know if you can see in the video. There's uh, just a little overhang right here. Remember that 1 8 by 1 8 stringer that's installed along here? That's what the floor of our non-trip will sit on, the lower part of the non-trip, okay? Yeah, it ain't much, but you don't, you don't need much. It's the same thing that it is over here. And this boat's been beat hard, as you know, and it's perfect. There's no cracks, no seams, no nothing, until you get here. <laughs> There's a whole chunk, chunky monkey gone, but uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're getting our right side non-trip ready to go. Uh, it's the same shape as the frame. That's the beauty of the Stoddaker hull is that the rear is just uh, It's not square, but it's all a real level box. So it, uh, it makes it so easy to build but anyway, as you can see That one's junk. <laughs> I cut it too short. So anyway cut another one uh, This is this guy here Right I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can. Stands a little over three eighths of an inch off of the jig. Already got this forward piece. As you can see, the stringers aren't on. What we're going to do here, pardon all the motion here. Right now, I don't know. First of all, can you see how crooked that is? I don't know if you're eyeballing down that. First of all, I wear bifocals, so everything looks crooked. Um, uh, so I use a lot of straight edges anymore. But this is a really, you know, it's a warped piece of wood like they all are. Uh, so we're going to attach this now onto the wood. And we're we'll brace it straight. And that'll help hold it straight, as well as the eighth inch piece down here. Way straighter than it would be if I just glued this on and hoped that all of my mounts were perfect uh, because I know they're not. So we're gonna mount it on here. We'll brace this straight. That'll encourage this thing to stay a little bit straighter and that'll just make things easier when we go to mount it on here. In fact, we can even keep a, uh, a piece of metal or something straight on here clamped to it while we glue it in place instead of just sticking it over against each rib because they might not be perfectly straight, okay? Am, am I making any sense at all there? Anyhow, m maybe it'll make sense as we go. So we're just gluing this on right now and then we will bring this assembly over and install it on the boat, okay? All right, something to mix with. <laughs> Stick your finger in there, wiggle it around. Oh. Dude, I regret that. I'll clean it up later. That's way more than we need, maybe? Way less? Not enough? How about now? You guys on International Waters or uh, Jim's Boat Dock, any of that kind of stuff? There's some pretty good forums out there. I haven't been following it, but I saw the title of a recent uh, query in the general conversation part. I, I think it's on International Waters where the title is Epoxy Won't Set. <laughs> oh, you poor sucker. <laughs> But I, I've been there. I don't, I don't mean to laugh at you. I'm laughing with you. I, I've been there where you, you know, you mix up a ton of epoxy and you think you've done an awesome thing and you, you glue a whole bunch of stuff together and you set it, you know, and you go to bed and you're laying there and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait. In the morning you go out there <laughs> and it's all gooey. Oh, it's such a heartbreak. You know, what are you going to do? I, no doubt the guy is wanting to know, how, you know, what can I do to make it set? Well, 
not a darn thing, man, man. If it didn't set, it didn't set. Take it apart, dig it out, make new parts, do whatever you got to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, life sucks when that happens. So try, try to get it even and, and, uh, and certainly take a minute to get it mixed up. Scrape the sides. Because first thing you're going to, well, not the first thing, but at some point you're going to start working your epoxy off the sides if you're running out. <clears throat> well, if you didn't take your time and scrape the sides really good, you're probably grabbing just raw epoxy and, and uh, you'd be hating life later. This part's going to be boring. I'll fast forward. Builder called me and told me, okay, they're getting ready to come and do the, um, do the groundwork. I think I told you that I'm in a flood zone, so FEMA's involved, and I gotta do this fancy engineered fill, and I gotta set the floor of the building. It has to be one foot higher than the highest on record flood. And I'm on the Yakima River, and it's it flooded huge back in the mid 90s. So I gotta raise this thing up like five feet. And uh, so anyway, I get the call. Hey, we're gonna come. We're gonna get started, and woohoo! Life's awesome. And uh, the next day, he called and said that the city got cold feet and kicked it back over to FEMA because now there's some. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Now there's some discussion about maybe needing to get water flow, a water flow analysis. So that when it does flood into a, a hundred year level flood, they want to know how the water is going to flow around my building. Ah, a rectangular building sitting way up on my property, decent little ways away from the house. And when the whole world is flooded, I mean, it's like, you know, you see Noah's Ark go on by. They're worried about how the ark is going to swing around my little building. I'm sure that'll be really inexpensive though, so... Right. Are you still here? Why? <laughs> Man. You need a life. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, man. I'm, I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you. Leave me a comment. Tell me you're fool enough to watch all this stuff. Got me a piece of metal here. I don't know, does that look straight to you? Oh, look at that, huh? Just like I planned it that way, I did not. Okay, got a nice straight non-trip, ready to go on. See you tomorrow.